My name is Bill Keegan and I work for Durham Geo Slope Indicator. This is our S500 master panel. I will briefly show you the operation and the functionality of this panel. Later, I will also explain the way you hook it up and also how you attach an add-on panel or an S502. The S500 is used for permeability and triaxial testing. It does saturation in 10 to the minus 4 and, and slower, slower rates. The main panel has an air supply, master air supply. It has controls to control the regulators to the burettes. The burettes are your confining pressure. This is not necessarily how you have to use it, but this is the standard way to use this. This will be your confining pressure or your cell pressure. Your head, which is on the bottom of the cell. Your tail, which is on the top of the cell. These are controlled by your pressure, auto load, bridge, and I'll explain these in a second. You have, you can select either a burette or pipette. Normally on the confining pressure you can go to burette because the volume is not necessarily uh, interesting. The head and tail will be on pipette once you start saturating your sample or doing your permeability or your traction testing. You can fill the burettes through the water drain on each burette and you can shut off access to the cells with this bottom valve. I'm going to go over the master section of the panel. The add-on panel or the S502 does not have this section because you will be utilizing this to operate the other two slave panels or, or add-on panels if you have them. You have a selection valve for your different regulators. The auxiliary is used for the additional panel that you, you attach. Regulator one is your differential regulator. Regulator two is your head pressure. Regulator three is your tail pressure. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our master pressure. This pressure should be set to 15 PSI above what is expected, your expected highest pressure. The reason is this regulator will take out any fluctuations in your air compressor. Not all of them, but most of them. So when we set the master regulator, we want to set it to a rate 15 to 20 PSI above your maximum pressure. If you're only going to 15, I mean to 50 PSI, and you'll want to set this at 75 or 65, 65 or 70. And it'll take most of the fluctuations out of the compressor. You have a pressure gauge for your air pressure and a vacuum gauge, which will monitor your vacuum. De-airing controls. The de-airing controls are used to fill and de-air your water. This is a standard de-airing tank. We also carry the S530 uh, Knoll deaerator, which is much more efficient but also much more expensive. You can put a vacuum on your deaerating tank or you can pressurize it. The pressurized side of the, of the deaerating controls pressurizes this tank in case you have the tank below the panel. If you have it below the panel, you'll have to put a 7, seven to 10 psi pressure on it to force the water into the burettes. If you have the gearing tank above, all you need to do is use gravity feed. You won't need the pressure side. The only word of caution here, there is a small regulator in the back, which I will show you shortly, that applies the pressure to your gearing tank. When you are on vacuum, do not switch this valve straight over because you will apply a vacuum to the small regulator in the back. And in that case, you will damage the diaphragm. So when you go from vacuum, you want to let it vent, which vents the de-airing tank. Once it's vented, then you go to pressure. Like I said, if you have the de-airing tank above, you don't need the pressure, just put it on vent and it'll gravity feed into your burettes. The fill controls will fill the de-airing tank with tap water. 
Once you fill it with tap water, then you're going to have to vacuum the air out of it to get the air and water. The drain, of course, is common sense. It drains it into a bucket or a sink. And I'll show you that connection shortly. The <coughs> chamber controls are quite useful. Uh, the chamber controls are used to fill the chamber with tap water. The external part of the chamber, your confining pressure, you use tap water. Don't normally use de aired water because it's so hard to come by and uh, it's not necessary in your confining. You have force drain, which will allow you to force the top of your cells and force the water through the drain here, which I will also show here later, uh, shortly. This valve here is used for on your membrane stretcher. You connect quarter inch OD tubing, apply, attach the other end to your membrane stretcher, turn the vacuum on. Be cautious with this because if you turn it full on, if you turn it all the way on, you will get 30 inches of vacuum or almost 30 inches of vacuum, which may rupture your membrane. So what I normally do is just give it a little bit of pre a little bit of vacuum off and on until you get the, the membrane stretched out into the membrane stretcher. Once that's done, you can shut this off. You won't need any more uh, vacuum. 